All right, to use absolute layout in code, first I'm gonna comment this out. Now in the code behind, first we're gonna create an absolute layout. So layout is new absolute layout. And before we forget, we should set content of the page to this layout. Okay, now we wanna add a box view. So aqua box is a box view and its color is color.aqua. We need to add this to our absolute layout. So layout.children.add aqua box. Now this add method has a few different overloads. The one that you currently see takes a view, which means an element, and it also takes a rectangle for specifying the position and size, and finally a flag to determine which values are proportional. So here I can specify a rectangle, and I'm gonna use the same values as the last video. So zero, zero, one, and one. And they all are proportional. So as the third argument, we use absolute layout flags dot all. Now, similar to what you learned about using grids in code, this add method internally calls one or more static methods on the absolute layout class. So we've got absolute layout dot set layout bounds, which takes an element like aqua box and a rectangle. So new rectangle. This method is useful if you want to change the position or size of an element later on after initialization. We also have another static method, absolute layout dot set layout flags. So if you want to change any of the flags, again, we pass our element and this time we can use a different flag. So what I want you to take away here is that this add method internally calls these static methods on the absolute layout class. So this is how we use absolute layout in code. To save your time, I'm not gonna repeat this example with the white box and the button. The technique is exactly the same. All right, next, get ready for an exercise on absolute layout.